I helped make millions of dollars for a recent client, and this is exactly how I did it. Now, this is kind of a hard conversation to have, but your website is underperforming. And you could be making millions of dollars, but your website is punching below its weight. And we are going to fix it. Now, this is the conversation I had with this client because it was very obvious that they had the ability. Their website had the juice. We just had to figure out how to squeeze it and get the juice out. Now, we're going to use a lot of tools in this video, and we are going to use a website as our test dummy because I cannot show you my client's website, obviously. So we're going to use just a random website online. We're going to use this one right here. I'll show you why we're going to use this one. But listen, if you like what you see in this video, come to my agency website, rankexpand.com. You can scroll down here, keep on coming. You'll see some testimonial videos and you can book your strategy call with me. Now, step one of the fix it phase is to determine the opportunity, right? And this is fairly easy to do. So we are gonna use this website as if it's our client for this video. I've never talked to these people, but I like the website because I think it is underperforming and I think it has huge ability, right? And why do I think this? Well, check it out. What you can do is you can scrape all of your competitors and this is 20 different competitors. All of them are not going to be a perfect competition to you. Not all are going to offer a thing. So our website here that we are using as our crash test dummy is offering a thing. And what is it? It looks to me like different certifications online, right? Different courses. Courses are great. Why? Well, you can sell an infinite amount of courses and it doesn't cost you any time or effort outside of just creating the course and attracting people to the website. So this is really, really good. I like it. But then we come to their competition and I want to see, is there any you know, low hanging fruit here? I want to see what are people actually doing? So do you see here the traffic right here? So I've kind of done some color code in here just to kind of get an idea. All right, which ones are the ones I want to hone in on? So this row here, E or column is DR, how strong our competitors' websites are. And I'm looking for weak websites, right? Do you see this one right here? So this is a DR26. So I'm gonna click on this and I'm saying to myself, okay, this could be a competitor that we can beat on any keyword, right? And what do they do? It looks like they do something similar. Now, let's just make sure we're on the same page. The website that we are working with right here is a DR53. That means our website is pretty darn powerful. The one that we just identified was a DR20 something. It was a DR26. And the interesting part is they have 28,000. Do you see this? 28,000 traffic per month. Whereas we, our website that we are pretending is a client only has, do you see it right here? 17,000. That means that our website, right, is underperforming. So if we come back here, this is what you need to realize with your website too. Your website is underperforming. You could be making millions if you did it right, but it's punching below its weight right now. Now through that whole process, there was an inferred type of situation. So we're gonna come back to this. So the, the inference, the inferred situation is what? If you have a strong DR, if your website has a strong domain rating, it means it has a lot of authority, it means you can kind of bully around other websites. And it's crazy to me when I come across a client or a hopeful client that has a DR50 plus and they're underperforming because you have so much opportunity. You are getting pushed around by a website like this. This is a DR26, okay? It means that backlinks matter, right? Press releases matter, citations matter. The things that can boost your website online to make it so that you can kind of push your weight around matter a lot. So that's a really big inference from step number one. So we're gonna mark it as what is your relevant authority to the competition? You need to take an audit of your competition. Listen, if you were going out to play baseball or football or soccer or whatever, you're going to look at the other team. You're going to look at the talent on the field and figure out how you can pair up against them. Who should we pitch this game or who should we run as quarterback or what have you? It is very important to do the same thing with your website. What is the relevant authority to competition? How much do we actually need to boost your website with backlinks if at all. Now look here, this is where it's going to get a little bit fun because when you identify websites that, that look like this, I get really, really excited. So this is the one that's the DR26, right? This is the less powerful one. Ours is the DR50+, plus, the one we're pretending to help, right? We have a competitor who has a DR26 who has a graph like this. So they most likely have an SEO behind the helm. And so what we're going to do is go to top pages and we're going to see, all right, 
which pages are actually going to be providing traffic to this website. And I want to know, what I'm going to do here is I want to know whether or not it's just vanity metrics, right? Vanity metrics can drive traffic to your website and not produce any results in the form of money, in the form of revenue. They have their place. It's very important to do that too, but I'm curious, let's just control click on five of these, right? Let's see what their CRO is. Let's see what type of call to actions there are. So this is their number one page on the website. This is our competitor. Let's come over here. So they have a CTA that pops up. Master ACLS algo update guidelines. Let's see if there's any more call to actions. This is looking nice. You can see why they are doing so well. This is custom. It's very, very nice. And here you go. There's the call to actions all over the place. I bet you this would be considered as a money page. So that's their number one page. It gets almost 2,000 clicks per month. They are crushing it. Love it. Okay. How is CPR performed differently? This is an informational post. So look off to the right. This is very good, right? You don't see any display ads on a website like this. So oftentimes people can make money with display ads. You get traffic to your website, do display ads. But when you're offering your own product or a service, and in this case, it's, it's a product in the form of a digital product, you don't do display ads. Now, I would make this better by doing call to actions in body, unique call to actions as they had over here, right? If we scroll down, I think it was a little bit further down or was it up? But basically what I would do, do you see, I don't see it, where is it? Let's scroll down, these ones right here. I just zoomed past it. I would put these call to actions in the blog format here in the body as well, because if I do F12, right? You cannot forget that people, a lot of these people are gonna be looking at the website on their phone. So the sidebar, the sidebar call to actions are only good on desktop. Coming back here to our step one of the fix it phase is what is the relevant content difficulty? So what we just looked at, and if I look at this, how hard would it be for us to create this content? Now, if I come over here to the blog post, AI can do this very, very, very easily, right? And this is the tricky part. People get all the time mixed up with AI content. Google is not against AI content. I mean, I've had, I've had websites banned from Google for doing it in the beginning. I get why they did that, right, in retrospect. But so long as the content is actually helpful and it's housed on an authoritative website that feels like a real website. Look, they have a real author here. I bet if we click through to his name, it would show, you know, credentials, these type of things. If you have, and this is a secret, and this is a big secret, if you have a website, that has a high domain rating, high authority, you can use AI content at scale. How we do it is we typically would post something like this and we would make sure after the AI does its thing that we go in after the fact, we do the internal links and we make sure the content is accurate. Now the next step is step two, which is the content plan. But I hope you realize that determining your opportunity is where you should be spending way more time than you think because in the beginning if you screw that up you're going to screw up everything right so quite literally what we will do is take every competition like you saw me do just now and we'll figure out who is who we have to know who's on first who's doing this who's doing that and guess what we can go a step further so if i go over to the competitions page i can figure out that they just posted this one right here do you see it and there's other ways to do it that are easier to kind of draft your opponent but you're able to see oh wow they just released this article they think this is a good one to write so if you compound that idea right and you're doing that with every competitor and especially if you have a higher dr then you're going to be able to be successful because it just makes sense. You're doing things at scale. You're finding out what they're doing. You're doing it better. So the content plan is then based upon step one. Now, before I go too deep in the content plan, which is a major engine, I want you to see this graph. So oftentimes, this is what it looks like when someone signs with my agency. So right here, let's pretend in April someone signed with us. There is a about two to three month lag time until there's parabolic growth. This is what it usually looks like. And that's for a few reasons. Number one is that Google's, its algorithm, has it baked into it for a delay. Right? If we do something today, we have to wait a month or two to see any results. Typically, the fastest I see is about one month to results, and then you can start to rank. So one month at minimum, right? So here's the key from my perspective, just being totally transparent. If I know that and I want to have our clients be successful as possible, I want to identify the lowest hanging fruit, 
right? So the content plan, when we start off, is all about identifying the lowest hanging fruit. Now there's very easy ways to do this, but here's the general concept. And I know it's a lot of data on the screen, but look at this one right here. If I, if I do this, do you see this? The keyword is online CPR certification. In other words, someone types that into Google, right? Disregard intense, all this stuff. The volume is important because 7,300 people per month type that in. So that's important. We need to identify the keyword plus the volume. Now, more importantly, check this out. What position does your website rank for, right? It's in the number five slot. Now, even if we were in the number three slot, I would attack this immediately. My first question is this, does this keyword online CPR certification matter? Yes, there's huge money behind that term. Therefore, I'm going to attack that term right away. And what we're going to do is a bunch of things. So position five, if we can rank position two or even number one instead, the company is going to make tons of more money right off the bat. Now going a step further, what we would do is, is literally scroll down here and figure out which ones are most important. And this is a conversation between me, my firm, and the company we are working for. They may say, okay, this one doesn't matter, but this one is huge. Okay, let's focus on that. And this is another great one. And then let's come down here. And they may say, this is great too, cheap CPR certification. And all of a sudden we are able to prioritize because the truth with SEO, the truth with your website, the reason that you are punching below your weight is you're probably overwhelmed. You're probably thinking of a million things you have to do when in reality you need to focus. And this is how we focus. So now that we've identified these different keywords and pages, what do we do? And the answer is really simple and it should be simple. This doesn't have to be complicated. The content plan is gonna be new content and it's gonna be revising old content. Now, if you already have content on the website like we just showed, that is on the doorstep of success. You're ranking very close to success because remember, the number one slot, whoever's in the number one position gets around 44% of the click-through. It's a lion's share. We have to rank number one. Otherwise, what's the point? So we are going to revise content immediately, and then we are going to build content to support that said revised content. And what I'm describing here is a content hub. Now, if you want to learn more about this, this is my book on Amazon, the SEO book. It's exactly what it goes into, right? If you want to learn how to do a content hub appropriately, this is your book. But things have changed and AI is here and this is the whole thing, right? Because everyone knows basic SEO principles, but not everyone knows what AI should truly be used for. And that's when semantic branching comes in the mix. Now I have a dedicated page on my website about semantic branching and it really works. Here's a case study. This is a real case study. Absolutely bonkers what it can do. Now, the cool part is we used to do something very similar with semantic branching. This has been around for a while, but it was so arduous and it cost our clients tons of money back in the day. But now because we have systems, it's more affordable for everybody. So this is accessible for anyone. So what I recommend doing is coming to this page, I'll have a link in the description because this is, if I were to write it in, right? Step three is semantic branching at scale. This is how we do it. This is what sets our agency apart. So advanced semantic branching tactics, phase one, research and discovery, but it's way more than what I described here because we use APIs. We use APIs that Google, that Google actually gives us access to. Like Google has APIs, it has different codes you can plug into and it'll show you what it thinks of your content on your website. Phase two is content strategy, writing and optimization and testing and refinement. Phase four is where you want to be always because whoever has the most budget usually can test the most. But like I said, because AI is here, we're able to offer this to everyone. Now at the bottom of the page, which I will link to right here is apply for your free semantic branch and SEO audit. Now, mind you, this is a limited availability. This is only for websites that qualify and we can tell which websites qualify because it depends on if you're looking for an SEO agency to work with or not. If you're serious, if you're kicking tires, these type of things. Now, if you don't know if you're qualified, that's fine. Come to the main, the homepage of the website, scroll down here and just tell us what's going on, right? Tell me what's going on, book your strategy call, your name, your email, your website. Tell me everything about your goals. And from that, we can jump on a quick 15 minute call and go from there.